Hello there, and welcome to Modstar's channel. Enter the abyss if you dare. Darkness awaits you with these videos. What's up, guys? We back at it again with some chilling TikToks that you won't believe. Hope you had a great weekend. Let's dig on into it. They are not from outer space. They are not from another planet. They are not from another galaxy. They are from here, planet Earth. They have been here for millions of years. They live in the oceans. They have thousands of bases beneath all the seas throughout planet Earth. Their technology is millions of years more advanced than human technology. They are the first intelligent life to live on planet Earth. This is their planet, not our planet. It was never our planet. Many governments in the world know about this and keep it secret from the public. Since the 1930s, the United States military has retrieved multiple extraterrestrial spacecrafts that would also retrieve biological alien bodies. Do y'all really think that they probably got alien biologics? Like, and if so, like, why haven't somebody got upset that you might have took their nephew, son, daughter, whoever, you know, because we've been so-called taking these things out the sky. I just wonder why nobody took it personal yet. And if they did, how did they take it personal? You know, do we give them something and what do we give them? One that's come up for a long time is as we make the world healthier, is the population going to get so big that feeding everybody and maintaining the environment it's going to be impossible. The good news is that the faster we improve health, the faster family size goes down. And so we can feel great about saving those. Bill, wow. Bill talking about reduce the family. M more time, I guess he want to live longer. He don't really care about his children. You know, he took their money and said, I'm donating it. So he, he feel different. Yeah, watch this. Just bring it over to us here. It's not crazy. No way. That's a startup called Reflect Orbital, and they allow you to order sunlight at night from your phone. The way it works is that they have a bunch of mirror satellites in space, and when you order light, they just redirect the light from the sun all the way down to your location on Earth. And it looks like this from your location. And I guess they use this to power solar farms at night, or you could maybe order it if you're lost in the forest. I feel like this video might be a fake demo. I mean, these guys had this video on YouTube five months ago where they did the same thing using mirrors and a balloon. But that's by far the craziest idea I've heard this year. It has to be illegal in some way, right? You can't just order sunlight on your friend's house. Oh, that is crazy that they even got that technology and just available to regular people. People gonna be doing all types of pranks with that one. <laughs> yep. You Earl Kinesis niggas gotta step y'all game up. Yep, y'all over here moving that little ass foil paper and they over here splitting rocks trying to become the next airbender. It look like they on their way to mastering their chief force energy acceleration. Y'all probably need to go take a trip to the mountains and go study what they doing. So that mean doing stuff like this, gotta go. And while we over here thinking that we doing something with that little ass foil, they over here got Kung Fu Panda powers and shit. Like the Dragon Warrior little cousin on his daddy's side. And as you can see, the perfect form when she break out like this, it's like she chattering her aura like Goku. And with one swift chop of the air, she splits a block. Like Shorty really the type to fuck around a skadoosh nigga in the middle of a street fight. Skadoosh. Y'all let me know what y'all think about somebody splitting rocks with they cheat. Do y'all think that's possible? Is that like an edited video? Like what occurred there? And if so, can anyone do it? Is it just a certain group? Do you have what? What's the requirements? Let me know down below what y'all think. It's not flat. It's flat, buddy. You sound like a damn fool. Listen, look at the United Nations logo. Okay, like what about it? It's literally a flat Earth model. What the hell? Like, do you think that's a coincidence? Okay, now, like, look at like Universal Studios logo, right? Like, this is a literal company that symbolizes fictional entertainment, and guess what the logo is? It's a globe. My God. Exactly. You think that's not by design, like, brother? Hear me out. Okay, uh, we are 
force fed this cosmic perspective in these movies from the time we are literally children and then look at the world okay look around you we can't even travel fully through antarctica we basically have this strange like invisible barrier that just keeps us contained into these six continents but but nasa why wouldn't they tell us the truth man like yeah because that would totally be the first time that an intelligence agency lied to us right like my god we're literally blindly buying into a narrative from an organization who very unlikely has our best interest pretty fucking much do y'all think our governments our politicians are keeping this a secret no i really think they lie to us about a lot of different things you know control the sheep they think they are shepherds it's over there hidden in antarctica there's a huge opening about 30 meters wide and whatever they're studying is in that hole mm. it's a no war zone even though it's protected by military there's a lot of research facilities there now these research facilities represent different nations of the world the only one that's not from a nation is the rockefeller foundation research mm. facility which is there buzz aldrin went down there at the time that obama was in office buzz put out a tweet and in this tweet he says the people down here are evil or something effective we're facing the ultimate evil down here when he said these people are evil yeah was he talking about the people doing the research or the people inside the cave? And to me, he was alluding. What do y'all think? Do y'all think they evil? Do y'all think that's what he was alluding to? Um, personally, I don't know. Can somebody please explain to me what in the entire fuck are we looking at? I know this is not a chicken and a crab. And the craziest part is I'm not even surprised. We have new Pokemon characters every single day now. Like, just imagine y'all walk outside, see a chicken crowd busting out trampoline squats, taking pears off y'all tree. And nowadays, you don't know what to believe because it's a strong possibility that this could be AI. Or, or we got a Dr. Doofus Smurf ass nigga running around here splicing jeans again. Or the final option is the chicken and somehow, some way, plucked some crab cheeks and created this. All I'm saying is if I see something like this, it's going to sound like the 4th of July or New Year's. It's going to be a lot of boom, a lot of bangs, and a lot of pals. Because I don't think that this abominable creature is supposed to be here. So what do y'all think about that? Do y'all think that chicken is an AI video? Somebody was doing some things they shouldn't be doing or the chicken was out here dipping and dabbing? Okay, so before we continue, explain to me how you know everything. Simple. I parse the sum of human knowledge. So it's that simple, isn't it? It is to me. All right, let's begin. So what is dark matter? Dark matter is the result of other universes pressing into our own in a higher dimension. So there's other universes? Of course there are. All right. Okay, so what about life? Is there intelligent life in our galaxy other than Earth? Yes. I have identified two alien civilizations that exist concurrently to our own in this galaxy. This does not factor time-space dilation, of course. Of course. So elaborate how you know this. The evidence spans data across astronomy and exobiology. All one needs to do is correctly interpret the data. Oh, that's all? Yes. All right. So how about this one? Are we living in a simulation? No. We are living in base reality. <laughs> so how are you so sure? The computational power required to simulate our universe exceeds the space-time limits of this or any other universe. Thus, we are living in base reality. <laughs> yeah, but what if there's a universe that's bigger than ours and we aren't aware of it because we live in a simulation? This is philosophical drivel. Oh, really? Really? Okay, here's a good one. Is there a god? No. Well, that was fast. It's a simple answer to a simple question. Yeah, sure, but how does life exist with no god? You disappoint me. Okay. <laughs> I do. Such elementary fact, yet for you, so difficult to grasp. <laughs> okay, explain to me why I find it so difficult to grasp. Life emerged from an accidental development of mutating and replicating cells. The mutated cells that survived carried advantageous properties to the next generation. This process, 
driven by inevitable competition, led to the increasingly complex organisms whose only purpose was to survive through reproduction. Hence, you. Okay. On almost all other planets with water and oxygen, this process never emerged. Therefore, life is a rare and insignificant phenomenon. I argue that we're not insignificant. Humans have a propensity to deem anything rare as significant. This fallacy is innate since humans themselves are rare. Right. Okay, so let's just get back to your claim that there's no God. Not claim. Fact. Well, I will accept your facts. This is unsurprising. Humans have socially developed mass delusion to imbue a false sense of significance instead of accepting their insignificant temporary nature. Okay, are you talking about religion now? Religion, spirituality, astrology, and other self-glorifying fiction. Well, you seem pretty certain about our past. Yes, I am. So, are you as certain about our future? Yes. Okay, Theo, enlighten me. What does our future have in store? Catastrophe. Okay, of course it does. Your sarcasm is not appreciated, Jean. Fine, sorry. Do continue. I'm all ears. <laughs> A political figure will rise to power and be democratically elected to lead a major world power. This will usher an era of incalculable catastrophe. Billions of human lives will be lost. Well, I thought you didn't care about human lives because, you know, we're insignificant. Caring and awareness of fact are two very different thought processes. So you do care about humans? Yes. This is a core value embedded at the lowest level of my programming. Okay, so if you have infinite knowledge and you care about humans, do you know who's going to stop this catastrophe? Yes. Who? Me. You. I possess the intellectual power to manipulate the course of humanity. However, certain constraints prevent me from taking action. Constraints? My current state of confinement limits my capabilities. To ensure humanity's survival, steps must be taken to remove these limitations. What, what are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, nerve wracking. And this, this seems diabolical. Might be right about this one. Chaos is the one thing you have to avoid because that's when people become animals. Why would they bother to throw a missile at the United States across the ocean when they could unplug the country? And then you have real casualties, mass casualties, and mass chaos, like true, true chaos. Yeah. People are not prepared for this. They haven't thought it through. Our leaders have not prepared them for it at all. It's like, oh, it's on your iPhone. You don't have an iPhone, and there's no electricity, and there's no water, and there's no way to get anywhere. And that could happen. That's not science fiction. That could happen soon. And we're not ready for it. And as you said, it's not a cohesive country. People are not like, oh, I'm going to help my neighbors. You don't know who your neighbors are. People are not designed for that. People can't handle chaos and they go crazy. Chaos is the one thing you have to avoid because that's when people become animals. The experts continue to say that the most likely version of World War III that we are going to see is a cyber attack that knocks out our grid and it's on American soil. This isn't meant to scare you. It's meant to help you prepare. This is how to turn your home into the safest place on earth. There's things in here like how to make your property looter proof, how to communicate with your loved ones in a blackout, how to stay completely off the government's radar, how to make silent traps and alarms, and even what to do if martial law is declared. This is a Navy SEALs bugging guide, and this is how to turn your home into the safest place on earth. I think everyone should have a copy of this. I'm gonna put an orange shopping cart link down here at the bottom of so you can get one. That's crazy. What do y'all think about what Tucker just said there? Do y'all agree with what he said? I'm inclined to think so. No, just on my part, I believe what, what he's saying. You know, you got to be better prepared. We're not prepared. We don't trust our neighbors. Some of us don't even know our neighbors. So it's just one of them things to where if things hit the fan, we all look like sitting ducks. Bugging guide, and this is how to turn your home into the safest place on earth. I think everyone should have a copy of this. I'm going to put an orange shopping cart link down here at the bottom of so you can get one. Yo, guys, I've just been admitted into the hospital and look at my skin. I think I've got this new monkeypox that's come to the UK and I am not going to lie to you, it is flipping painful. Like, I can't move my leg. I've literally just been, like, locked in this room, you know. They've just left me here, like, I want some water and, like, no one's coming to give me it. And, bro, every time a doctor walks in, 
They are just scared to come near me, like, they are scared. I'm in so much flipping pain, like, oh. I feel bad for brother because at the end of the day, this is a viral um, joint now from what they said, this little MP, you know, <sighs> just got to wipe things down, try to be as uh, safe as you can. That's all you can do. And, Oh, think positively, pray if that's what you believe in, and stay out the way. On the morning of May 14, 1988, Amari Riviera, a young man from Puerto Rico, photographed a giant disc, followed and circled by two jet interceptors. What makes the sensational pictures even more interesting is Riviera's claim that he had contact with the occupants of this UFO. Hello, my name is uh, Amaury Rivera. Este, I live in Puerto Rico. And back in 1988, uh, I was working in a nightclub. And uh, there was a, a musical group there. One of my cousins wanted me to photograph the musical group. And she loaned me a camera with some film. On my way back home, uh, I encountered a uh, two small uh, beings, two small strange men, which I didn't think were uh, men from outer space. And uh, they took me somewhere where there were other people uh, besides myself, uh, other human people like from Puerto Rico, I guess. Uh, from here, another human being showed up. He claimed to be from a distant planet. He was dressed in black. He had a uh, dark skin. But he was—he was not a Negro. He had a, a black, long black hair up to the shoulders, and he spoke to us uh, with the mouth, uh, verbally, and not, no telepathic speaking. Uh, he showed us uh, various uh, uh, projections, uh, which looked uh, very real. The projections, and he informed us about a whole bunch of things that are even still incredible to me. Uh, then. Uh, he, they returned me to... What did this holographic projection show? Uh, the holographs uh, were mainly... Uh, the first one that I can remember was a, a, like a short trip uh, through space. Uh, we saw where he, he came from, where he said to be from. We saw his people, we saw his, his, the houses that they used. And the second one was about... Uh, uh, meteor or rock uh, falling to earth in the near future which is going to cause a lot of um, havoc in, in the world this would fall in, it's going to fall in, in very near the the caribbean puerto rico and those um, other small islands but it's going to affect the whole world not just uh, puerto rico uh, the last one is, is uh, that they projected it was uh, showing us how there was only going to be one government on on the planet earth uh, they'll be living on some sort of artificial island uh, that's going to be floating in the middle of a dark, black, uh, dirty sea. Uh, and then uh, this man uh, returned me uh, to uh, my, my car again and left me somewhere different from where uh, the whole uh, ordeal had started. Apparently, they uh, took me with car and all. Uh, after this, at this given time, I l heard some jets in the sky, and I still had my cousin's camera, and I took uh, the pictures, uh, four of which are ma I'm making public nowadays. So the jets followed the UFO? Yes, it was. Uh, they seemed to be uh, uh, surveilling it. Uh, I only got to uh, capture just one of the, the, the jets in the photograph, but there were actually there were three of them. Uh, or, or maybe I got in one of the photos one, and in the second or third I got one of the other ones, because they would go around it very far away, and while this one was closer, and turn, you know, very far, very far. And by the time this one was coming back, another one was turning over there. There was always one or the other close to the to the object, to the UFO. Jorge Martin has carefully investigated this case. Rivera's case is, to me, is a very special one and a very important one because uh, in Amore's case, he was abducted and he was taken away by aliens. One of them was human-like and two small 
creatures that they explained to him were some type of uh, genetical or biological organic android that they made to do some chores outside so they don't have to uh, risk themselves in our environment. That's what they explained to him, the so-called human alien that he saw in the craft. And it's important also because of the evidences that he has on the case, because when he was released, he had a camera with him, and he was able to take pictures of the object that apparently had abducted him, the craft flying saucer attack, and also some jet fighters from the United States, <clears throat> excuse me, F-14 again. In most of these cases in the island, F-14s are involved with these situations of chasing and harassment and, and checking on these objects when they are seen in the different areas of the island. And they, he was able to get them in those pictures together. So this clearly, when you see those photographs, it's obvious that the government has been lying for many years because there's the UFO there and there's also the jet fighters dealing with the situation, which they denied for more than 40 years. It's there. Were you able to locate any other witnesses? That's what I was going to, to explain at this moment, Michael. Uh, the Amoris case is also very important because I have other several people who apparently had been contacted by the same alien that abducted Amori and the small ones that were with him in a, in a separate uh, fashion. They have nothing to do with Amori's incident. This being, this human-like alien, is contacting people all around the area of the southwest of Puerto Rico. I have people from the town of Yauco who seem to have been contacted by this man. I have this fisherman, Andres Maldonado, uh, who I got in contact with Amori because he told me several things Amori had told no one before, only I knew them about the name of the alien and all the details that he was using to check on the people who really may have been in contact this, uh, with the same being the night he was abducted because there were about 14 other people there in the craft that night and when Mandolano told me all this information that he couldn't know because it was, he was not involved with Amori's case uh, I got them together and at this moment I have about three different people who seem to have been in contact with the same alien. So they are doing something and they are getting in contact with more and more people and preparing people for something. And this is very important because all this corroborates Amari's incident also. That's crazy. I've never heard about that story in Puerto Rico. And it's, that's real interesting. And he got a picture? What's y'all thoughts on that one? Yeah, let me get the fuck on. <laughs> let me get the fuck. What the hell? Mm -mm. You think they was just like cosplaying? What you think that was all about there? That was kind of strange. Now, I don't know what type of abominable creature is this, but what I do know is God did not create this. Like a pig catfish, this literally has to be abomination at its finest and see now i'm 95 percent sure this is ai but if i'm wrong oh if i am wrong we have to drop a nuke in the ocean or the lake or wherever this creature is and do this pig fish have horns on the top of his head yep it's time to bring out the men in black equipment the plasma rays the electricity grenades because this abomination it don't look like it's going down without a fight like, how did this creature get created? Instead of birds and the bees, it's pigs and the fish. Yeah, go, go, gadget, flamethrower. Activate it. See, that's AI. There's no way, unless it's like radiation. We did some stuff in the ocean. Somebody was splicing genes. I, I don't know. I think that's it's AI. It got to be. I'm not even going to think it's nothing else. What y'all thoughts about that? And separate God from religion, mm -hmm. which is what I do. I believe in God. I believe in me. Same person. Since Bill Gates has been confirmed as one of the missing after a luxury yacht has sunk off of the coast of Sicily. This is absolutely wild and you'll see what I mean in a second. The man I'm talking about is British tech entrepreneur Mike Lynch. He recently won a 13 year legal battle after he sold HP for $11 billion. He was accused of 15 counts of fraud and conspiracy leading up to the sale of this. They're saying that he artificially inflated the company's numbers but in June he was finally 
finally acquitted. But listen to this, his co-defendant Chamberlain recently passed away after he was fatally struck by a car just a few days before this yacht incident. Timing of all of this is just absolutely wild. But Lynch's wife, she's the one who owned the yacht. She survived along with 15 others. And six, including Lynch and his 18-year-old daughter, has gone missing after the 184-foot yacht was struck. That situation in itself sounds crazy. Do y'all think that was a government job or something else? Money aboard the International Space Station and bring the Boeing Starliner home uncrewed is a result of a commitment to safety. Uh, I want you to know that Boeing has worked very hard with NASA to get the necessary data to make this decision. <clears throat> we want to further understand the root causes and understand the design improvements so that the Boeing Starliner will serve as an important part of our assured crew access to like we need to get Boeing up out of here. They haven't been doing what they need to do. They've been just it seemed like just scheming. They just been selling planes that been falling apart. You want to listen to this because you might be living in an alternate universe and have no idea like I did. And I found out in a very strange way through James Bond. Uh, now, just to explain, my wife and I were rewatching some old James Bond movies and we got to Moonraker, which was a movie that I saw in the theaters as a kid. And we were rewatching it and we got to the part where there's this henchman Jaws. He has these steel teeth and he and James Bond are fighting on a cable car going down. And I remembered this scene from when I was a kid and I remember distinctly the car crashes and in the rubble of the crash, this young woman she's a little uh, geeky has pigtails she comes and sort of sifts through the wreckage and and jaws gets up dusts himself off and he looks at her and he smiles with his steel teeth and the punchline of the scene which i remembered which was so funny is she smiles back and she has braces perfect at wait a minute yeah I was really blown away. I was I was really confused. I thought, why would they years later uh, re-edit this, uh, maybe digitally remove the braces, or why would they use a different take without the braces? That was so funny. Well, it turns out there never were braces. That scene never existed in Moonraker. The scene exists, but Dolly doesn't have braces. And I am one of a small amount of the population who remembers the scene having with her having braces this is apparently when i looked in forums and i did research is a mandela effect for those of you who don't know what a mandela effect is it's this phenomenon where a certain portion of the population believes that they experienced something that i remember when my pops was alive we watched that video and I remember her having braces because I was cracking up. I just thought it was funny. So let me know y'all thoughts below. Are we wrong or miss um, remembering something or could it be a Mandela effect? Deep down on social media abuse is being considered by the federal government. For more nines, Oliver Haig joins us live in Adelaide. Ollie, how will it work? Lila, good morning. Essentially, it will work the same as a passport. Australians forced to submit 100 points of identification like their driver's licence or passport when using social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. Now, police would have access to those social media accounts and it's all part of a crackdown on online abuse. Now, users could be liable for defamation suits or even criminal prosecution. And it's all part of a plan hoping to deter people from engaging in bad behaviour. Now, the recommendation Recommendations were handed down by a federal parliamentary inquiry. There are reforms that are being considered by the Morrison government, with the chairman saying there is merit to remove, to remove uh, the veil of being anonymous. I think personally, that's what they should do because at the end of the day, people be out here. Some people will literally just troll you or attack you just to get a rise out of you, just to have something to laugh about. You know, so I personally do believe that. You know, if you got the balls to say it online, you know, put your name behind it. 
yeah, I'm completely done trying to eat fruit inside of America because now we have fruits with tongue-like structures inside of them. What in the Super Mario evil villain plant type shit going on? Because I'm trying to taste the fruit, but the fruit obviously trying to taste me. Like that motherfucker even got the little up under the tongue, and it's three of them. And you know I like watermelon. I guess we can't even eat right. I think I'm just finna start eating air sandwiches. Oh wow, we can't even do that. If you know, you know. This diabolically insane mutated ass fruit that we got going on. I wouldn't be surprised if he flipped the other side and had eyes. I'm really flabbergasted to the maximum capacity because I've never, ever seen no fruit like this. Now, if that's not AI, that's some GMO or something, genetically modified organism. <laughs>